All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, next person asked how to play retracement with these. How do you play a retracement? Mm -hmm. Find a single after retracement is the best answer I got. I'm not sure exactly what the question is. Okay. Yeah, I have found, I um, and I think you've already sure. shown in some yeah. cases where you can even look for an arrow and then, you know, if people want to wait for a retracement after the arrow, they can still certainly do that. Um, sure. You know, it can go one of two ways, as you said. You know, there's always a trade-off. Uh, if it works out, then, well, if you get a retracement, then that's great because you're buying a wholesale, you're getting a lower price, assuming you're going long. Um, the downside of waiting for retracements is it may not retrace, and then you'll miss a good trade. So, um, you know, there's no perfect uh, solution, but you kind of choose the game that you want to play, that you're comfortable with, and then you just stick with that. You just, like you said, you trade consistently the same way all the time. That's very, very important, very wise words. And don't try to catch every move of the market, because you won't. Nobody does. You just uh, set up your system and you um, play that, and that's it. You know that's what we call making the market come to you, instead of chasing the market. I was I was thinking this afternoon uh, because some of the questions that I had received over the past few weeks uh, was like, you know, show me how to make this thing work so I never lose a trade. Now no one really asked me that question, <laughs> but it but it kind of alluded to that, and I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, if it were only true, yeah. Barry and I would be sitting in the largest hotel in the penthouse in Paris, and we might have John Carter bringing us drinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, here's the next one. Um, I'll just answer this. Uh, will it, Jack asks, will it work with shorter time frames such as 3 minute, 5 minute, 15, and or 20, 600, 1200 ticks? Uh, yes, the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Only thing I would say is if you're going to use 200 and 600, you'd want to use 1,800 ticks instead of 1,200. Uh, next one is, do you find this is best for cherry picking or eagle eye? In other words, are you looking yes. for the setup on the midterm or the long term? Uh, take your choice. It's just a matter of how you want to trade. They work equally as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. I've tried using the study with the monthly time frame. Okay, that's interesting. But don't get any possible symbols to trade. Is there a reason for this? Thanks. Yep. <laughs> yep, there's a reason. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe you haven't looked at it for enough years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, the, 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 and I'm, I'm not. I'm kidding, but I, I'm serious at the same time. The right. longer the time frame, the fewer signals you're going to get. That, that's just the name of the game. <laughs> it takes it longer to run its cycles and, and what have you, and it just takes longer for it to set up. Yeah. So that's why you're investing when you start using the monthly charts. Mm -hmm. More so than trading, that's an investing thing. Right. And Nothing that's fine. With it. And that's fine, but that's right. You get, um, I mean, gosh, I was trying to pull up a, uh, a uh, in fact, I'm going to do it here because now I'm just, I'm interested. I like that question. Um, I'm trying to pull up a monthly want... chart here. Well, here, I'll give you one right quick. Like. Yeah, you can pull one up. Just go right there. Go to daily. There you go. Down here to 15 years and we'll put the month on there. Okay. Now, there's signals, but you've got to understand, each one of these is a month. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and if you happen to be over here, and, you know, you were looking at it over here, there's no signals, you know, for a long time. For years. Right. Yeah. Each one of these bars is a month. Yeah. Uh, it just so happens that when they come, they come. Yep. Yep. That's right. And that's going to be true of anything. You know, it's just, yeah. I mean, if we had a cycle indicator around there, I mean, how many cycles are there in a year? Maybe, I don't know, <laughs> three? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Next one. I tried using the study with the... Okay, I just read that one. Okay, next one from Bill. Are the scan results and indicators accurate if you're trading after hours? No. No. Okay. No, and no, because the volume is not... Well, I say no, because I use volume in my scans. Uh, I suppose that if you took volume out, it would be perfectly okay, but you're just not going to have the activity after hours that you would have otherwise. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the more information you have coming in, uh, the more accurate your scans will be. Now, when I say after hours, I'm talking about things that you have after hours feed on. Because if there's no more feed coming in on these stocks and stuff, that all you're going to get is where it closed out at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Okay, uh, here's a good question. Somebody says they noticed on your charts that you have some... Uh, labels there, bull stop, bear stop, average spread, what are those? Uh, that's a little study I wrote just to help me uh, uh, use stops. You can use the, uh, the ATR trailing and it pretty much does the same thing except it puts little dots on your screen as to what that would relate to these bull and bear stop positions and I just didn't want dots on my screen. So I have it go up there in labels. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jack's asking me what time frame I recommend for day trading. And there is no one particular time frame. It uh, varies depending on several factors. Number one, how much volume any particular market trades. So it would be very different if I was trading. VE minis, which has a lot of volume versus a lower volume stock uh, or crude or oil or Forex. Uh, so I would adjust based according to the volume. Number two, it's also a money management issue. So you have to look at the risk involved, the average risk on a cycle high or cycle low of any given market, and then compare that risk to the size of your trading account because based on our money management system and top dog trading, we don't want to risk more than one half of 1% to 2% on any given trade. So that also, obviously, the longer time frame you use, the, the bigger the range um, between your entry and your stop at those highs and lows. So you have to take that into consideration as well, and that will be different for each person depending on the size of your trading account. A third one is more of a psychological issue, and that is how fast you are, how quick you are at analyzing the setups and then uh, executing the trade. Some people are very quick to do that. Other people um, just feel very uncomfortable making quick decisions and executions and they want more time to analyze and actually push the button. So then that's an individual issue as well. So those are, there's no magic time frame that's best for day trading. Those are the issues that you need to consider, primarily those three. Okay? That last, that last one's huge. It's, it's huge. Until you are able to go through all your, your rules and stuff, like on autopilot, it makes such a big difference whether you're paying, trading a three-minute chart or a nine-minute or 15. And then once you get used to it, the, the shorter the charts don't seem to be so short anymore. Right. So I wrote an article on that. If you want more details, um, anybody on this webinar will be happy to send you. It's actually a blog post on my blog, and it's several years old, so I'd have to look it up to be able to give you the URL. I don't have it memorized, but just send me an email at barry at and I'll be happy to send you the link to that article, which talks about how to determine the best time interval for your trading. Okay, next one from Bill. When applied to weekly charts, does the Top Dog Visualize Trader use modified settings on Stochastic and MACD that Top Dog uses? Oh, that's a good question. Can be if you wanted to. Uh, all you have to do is go into the Edit Settings, and you can change your MACD and uh, Stochastic settings. If you want to set them up at a 5 to 1 or something like that, you certainly can do it. 
uh, I encourage you not to do that. I encourage you just to change your your week to maybe three days or whatever. And uh, it, it just seems to work a little smoother because I know that the three to one formula that Dr. Burns uses on the actual the, the stochastics in the MACD uh, are very good. They're very accurate. Uh, I don't know how accurate the five to one are. So I can't really comment. But you can change the settings, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about Thinkorswim is you can actually set up a three-day chart so you don't have to use a weekly chart. It's very easy to do. Yep. This is all you need to do. You say, uh, what we can do here, we'll go two years, and we'll go down to uh, three days. There it is. Right. So, and I, I would favor that. You know, in fact, it's in my course. If you remember, I say if you can use a three-day chart as opposed to a weekly, that's preferable. It's not a huge deal, but if you can do it. And see, the problem is most charting platforms can't do it. So then we go to the weekly, but then you have to change the inputs. And hey, why not make it simple and just stay with the three-to-one ratio and keep your indicators all the same? Well, that's one of the nice things about Thinkorswim. Okay, we've got, by the way, um, we've got several people voting for the addition of adding the K limit to the study. So, just to let you know, Gary, we got a number of people who are saying, yeah, I would like that. Okay, well, we'll consider them on the next release. Uh, that's pretty easy. You've had it in there before, so I think it would be pretty easy to add, wouldn't it? Oh, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Just a matter of, you know, get, getting the right uh, expiration dates and what have you to different people that are out there. Might be create a little problem. It might be better to do it on renewal. Okay, here's Whatever. the next question is, would you be kind enough to share your scan with me? Uh, I go over in the uh, manual, as a matter of fact, how to set it up. But I'll be glad to show it to you. It's very simple. Um, well, and we'll have to move. While you're there, move. another question that's similar is, what time frame or time frame signals do you recommend scanning for swing trading? Well, I simply tell you what I use. It's up to you. And I can, I can matter of fact, I can talk a little bit about scans because I'll get this little guy out of my way if I can. There. Uh, I'm just going to pull up one of my scans here. And when you save your scans, they come up in this, this personal. You don't have to designate that. They come up there automatically. Here's my standard scan that I use, the TD Bullish scan. You see, I use a million and a half volume. You don't have to have that. You can, and, and the way you get that is if you just say, I add a stock filter. And it, it will come up. Matter of fact, it comes up volume, as you see here. It, it came out in, in place number three is what it did when I added it, when I clicked up here. And just put your million and a half in there for a, mi a minimum or a million or 500,000 or whatever you care to put in there. Also, you use a, a price uh, limitation. Uh, I don't want things beyond 65, and I don't want them below 5. That's just a little peculiarity I have. Certainly nothing that you need to be con concerned about. My, my other scan is I just use, I would like to see uh, signals on two different charts. But I, I'm going to show you there might be an advantage that you don't do that. And I, I noticed it's caused me to miss some very good trades. Uh, it's, that would have been a, a high percentage and uh, high reward trades. And, and I'll show you why in just a second. Uh, but I set it up for both the day and the two hour, so that I have a signal on both of those charts, so I can just start looking for uh, an entry on the shorter chart. I'm, I'm good to go from that point. Uh, it does limit the amount of results that I get, however, and I will show you that. Uh, I'm going to scan this one just the way it's set up, and it's going to come out like it is up here on the left. Let's see, same thing. Different order, but it's the same thing. So I'm just going to take the two-hour chart off, and I'm going to scan it without it. And this is just crossing on 
the daily chart. And this is how many signals I have. Now you get to go through theirs and sort through them and see which one you'd like to trade. I've been in Mo forever. I've been in this one for years. <laughs> it won't go down far enough to make me want to get out. Uh, let's look at this one. This one comes up all the time. Shorts here. Now it came up because I had an error here. It would also come up the day before and a day before and a day before and a day before and a day before and back here about a couple of weeks and then so on. Every time I would get an error here on a on the daily chart, it would be included in my scan. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of the same ones appear here uh, repeatedly, and that's okay. That's not a problem. Uh, what do I got here? Okay, uh, that's not a problem. Uh, it's just that you have to sort through them, or maybe decide that you remember them and you don't want to look at them every day, whatever the case might be. But if I had done that. I will show you how it might have got me into some trades. All right. I got a signal on this day when I did not have one on a two-hour chart. So I might have missed an opportunity there. I got a signal on this day when I did have one on a two-hour chart. And you notice it's actually in a better position. This one, it's right here on the middle chart. It's right here. And on this one, which is one, two, three days later, it's right here. So which do you prefer? It's up to you. But uh, that's really all there is to the scan. The, the, the manual walks through how to set it up, and that's what you get. Oh, here's a good question. Um, Bill is asking, can you do scans for three-day charts, for the three-day time frame? Uh, no, I think that's a problem. It's a problem not because of any reason other than the fact that when you go to select uh, your days on the side, they don't give you that choice. They give you one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, ten minute, and etc. But I will tell you that if you scan for the week, you'll find that it works pretty well for the three day uh, because that three day is caught within each week. In other words, you got three days in this week and then two more days and the week runs out, but you started the next three day cycle. So uh, you can generally pick it up in there. Also, scanning just the day would be fine uh, it, because there are three days in a three day uh, cycle. So that would work as well. And you try them both. See, see which one you like the best. But there's no way to pick exactly three days. But that's not a problem because in these scans, as long as you're scanning a, a long time frame, it, it, it gives you results on a chart that you can use. So it's not a big issue. Okay, here's the next question. When you get arrows on the long-term and the medium-term setup chart, and you decide to take the trade on the short-term trigger chart, I want to verify that you advise entering the trade on the short-term chart with a corresponding green volume bar to maximize probability for price move upward as a long-term. Is this the correct method? Sounds like a good trade plan to me. Okay, good. That is a good question, and um, yeah, I, that's how I understood it as well. Um, actually, that leads to another question. Do you, you know, since the shortest term time frame, that's where we're looking for that initial impulse, boom, push up, do you consider whether the uh, volume bar is green on the midterm and the long-term chart as well, or just primarily on the short term? I find it increases the probability of the trade if it is green uh, on other charts. On um, all the charts, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, but again, it all boils down to probability. The the more assurance you get that you're going to have a good trade, then the less likelihood you have is higher reward. That's always the case. You're always exchanging the security for cash. Right. 
Now, a couple of people, these couple of questions here I'm going to combine together. Um, and they're good ones. I think you answered it, but let's make sure. So, people are looking at your time frames, for example, daily, two hour, 40 minute. And they're asking, is that good for swing trading, holding for multiple days, like for example, five days? Or do you always get out before the end of the day? No, no, I hold trades for a couple of weeks. Ah. What, what you need to be sure of, and, and really, uh, there's a qualifier on, on that question. Uh, here's the way I work my things. When, when I, let's just say, I'm going to just go to the enter this chart, and I don't know whether it's a good opportunity to enter or not, but just for chuckles, mm -hmm. because all, of, all these little labels up here are based on this candle, okay? And I set my stops, even though I will take a trade, uh, you know, it doesn't really make any difference whether you take it on the middle trade, uh, the middle chart, the, uh, the small chart, or the large charts, but guess what? The price is exactly the same on all three charts. And that's really all, you know, what you're concerned about with the price. If you're concerned about whether it's moving a little bit down and you want to catch it on an up candle or, or something like that, that's fine. I understand why you want the trigger to be on the, on the shortest chart. But it being a swing trade, I have built in this little, this little swaggle in here. And, and like Dr. Burns said, you're kind of buying it at wholesale if you wait for this little mini retrace here and, and took it, you know, for instance, on this, this bar. But here's the deal. Let's just assume I'm buying this. I'd buy it at the high. I'm not saying I would do that. But let's say I just bought it up here, and it tells me right now that I've stopped should be set at $61.21. So that's where I'm going to set my stop. Okay, and I do it on the mid chart. Now, uh, and I did it on this candle so that the labels up here would match. Let's say I did the same thing on this candle and we use whatever the labels told us up there. And price went up to here. Well, what I'm going to do then is say, okay, then my stop should be moved up to here. It's something I call chase stops. I just use the same stop margin that offered me the security of the trade in the front end to chase behind the price as it goes. I don't believe in trailing stops because trailing stops on candles like this one will suck it up here and it's based off the very high of the candle and it will cause you to get stopped out too early in a lot of cases. So I just use what I call these chase stops and it's the same distance between current price as it was when I took the price. And as long as it's moving up strongly like that, I don't have a problem hold, holding it overnight. But if I were in a trade, like say it was wobbling around in here, and I hadn't built up much profit in the trade, and I was worried about it would come back on me, uh, if I did decide to hold it overnight, I would move my stop up very close to the bottom saying, this is just like me getting out the day before, except it gives me a chance that maybe it'll go up. So that's, otherwise, I'm out at the end of the day. So if it's a bad enough position, I just get out. I'm not just going to wait for it to come back and stop me out. Okay. So I do all three is what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Okay, next question is I, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is being recorded and the video recording, uh, I'm not sure how, when I'll get it done, but probably over the weekend sometime I would guess. It takes a little longer than just posting it because the, you know, we're already an hour and 15 minutes into this, so uh, what I have to do is I actually have to uh, splice up the video into smaller videos so that the file size is smaller. Um, because otherwise it becomes too unmanageable for people with slower computers to watch a really long video. That's number one. Number two, I also run it through a video processing uh, software program to improve audio quality and things like that, so to get a better quality. Okay? All right, but yes, as soon as it is loaded, I will 
let everybody know. I'll send an email out to everybody, and uh, we'll put it on YouTube so that you can view it even if you have an Apple or an iPod or whatever. Okay, next question. I swing trade in the evening. Are end of day signals valid? Valid. You mentioned something in the first video about this. Are they valid? Yeah. So he's, you know, like he maybe comes home from work or something, and he brings it up. He brings up his uh, scans, or he does his scans at the end of the day. He gets an arrow pointing at the end of the day. Is that oh. valid for him then to place a trade for the next day? In other words, I guess. Well, unfortunately, I can't tell you what's going to happen overnight or at market open. And that, that's always an unknown. Uh, and that's why picking up that, that signal uh, might be a dicey thing. Perhaps what you'd want to consider would be a limit order uh, to make sure that you get some uh, movement in your direction, and it may work out. I'm, I don't trade the first 30 minutes of the market open. So you know what I think about that. But you could put a limit order based on time and price. And if you don't know how to do that, I, I, can, I can explain that to you. But you can set it up for your, here, I'll show you real quick. Um, there we go, we just do this. I don't actually want to make an order. <laughs> you can go over here, and you click on that. And you can submit the order at a, a, a specific time. Uh, submit the order at whatever exact time that you want. And you can also attach over here, rather than a market order, you attach it as a limit order. That way you can avoid the thir first 30 minutes of panic and uh, maybe keep yourself from getting a trade that's going against you. Of course, it could blow through your limit and you wouldn't get it, but uh, there you go. That's what, that's what your options are.